Greetings, dear viewers. Welcome. Today, I have a poem about the great Emmanuel Lasker. The poem is Lasker and his laser bishops. This is a poem about the game played by Emmanuel Lasker against Bauer. And this was played in 1889 in Amsterdam. What is the most significant element of this game? That is the first question that we need to address. The significant element of this game was that Lasker sacrificed his bishop, uh, both the bishops, and he went on to win the game. And at this, uh, at that time, at 1889, this was something quite creative. And even today, the chess world understands that this was not easy to spot. When we are discussing great champions, usually they have something very unique about themselves in terms of uh, their playing style and approach to the game. In terms of Lasker, he is famous majorly for his understanding of the opponents. He knew that there are going to be certain instances where this is going to give some kind of an un uh, in a way an uncomfortable position for my opponent and Lasker used to go ahead and enter that positions even though he was not quite prepared so he was considered as a master of psychological ploys against the opponent and this was one of the crucial elements why he was a world champion for a whopping 27 years this game uh, as I told involving sacrifice uh, is something that is appreciated even today with the era of the engines so let us get into some critical positions to understand more about this game. This is the game Lasker versus Bauer, played in 1889, 1889 Amsterdam. The first moment that I want to take you through is this particular moment, the very first move. Lasker plays the bird opening, which is 1f4, and this is considered as not very sound. Again, probably this may be due to the fact that Lasker knew about his opponent something and he knew that probably he guessed that this may be a little uncomfortable for him the next critical position is this this position is uh, to just let you all know that sometimes uh, optimal defense is going to just uh, squat away all the possible attacks and in this position actually bauer if he had played his knight to c5 lasker has just made lasker playing with the white pieces has just made knight c3 to e2 and Bauer in this position could have played knight to c5 and the white bishop had to be exchanged but nevertheless he went on to play c5 and that is how our double bishop sacrifice uh, is going to emerge because the bishop on d3 is not exchanged for the knight next critical position is this this is probably the most interesting element of the game Gary Kasparov, when he's writing about this game in his uh, book, My Great Predecessors, he says that the move that is played by Lasker, first uh, it's Bauer's move now, he plays queen to c6, and here Lasker plays the very, very interesting queen to e2. It's interesting and deceptive as well. It may be hinting that the bishop might move to um, b5, that is one part of it and there is also another reason it has to guard the g2 square because a potential d4 is on the cards by black but if you understand a little bit more deeply uh, we can see that it is actually in a way very essential for the two bishops to be sacrificed which is coming quite soon of course a lot of uh, writers also told that why did lasker move his queen to e2 if he knew that there is going to be the sacrifice that he is going to be attempting but Kasparov says that but nevertheless in some variations in some deep variations queen e2 is very essential move if you load this position to a modern engine it shows that knight h5 is the precise move but nevertheless even Kasparov agrees that queen e2 was a very precise and deceptive move again giving an instance of how well Lasker was prepared psychologically knowing his opponents quite well. Now in this position we are going to see how the final bishop sacrifice was executed. So in this position let's see what happens. So first a6 is played to prevent b5 but knight goes to h5 knight takes and now comes bishop into h7. King into h7, queen into a uh, queen and h5, and now comes bishop takes g7, 
and yeah, now more or less it's very difficult because the rook is also joining the attack and when the rook slides to h3 the queen has to give up itself and after this again there is a quite interesting move which is queen to d7 winning one of the bishops and Lasker went on to win um, after all the sacrifices it was not quite immediate that there was a checkmate but because of the material superiority Lasker went on to win the game and this uh, Gary Kasparo calls this as Lasker's patent the double bishop sacrificed so now that you understood some important moments of the game let us dive into the poem then the master of psychological play employed the birds opening such distinct opening as a choice may not be completely precise but it did turn out to be wise Defense in that times were not optimal, quality at times being minimal. The light squared bishop could have been swapped and, and the sacrifices would have stopped. An intricate move queen e2 with all its power made opponent to err. Thus came the famous double bishop sacrifice which was pretty and <laughs> nice. The game did not end with the immediate checkmate. It instead helped Lasker to create a material superiority which was favorable and a victory which was admirable. Of course, the final position I'm going to be again giving it to you uh, right at the right hand top corner of the screen so that it becomes more complete. Yeah, same thing that I showed. So, in, uh, after uh, the queen goes to d7 it's all over i hope uh, you like the poem and uh, as usual i'm going to be uh, giving the full poem in the description if you want to check out of course the link to the game also will be given and if you're not subscribed to the channel do subscribe and if you like the poem do like the video thank you very much for your time